The Pregnant Care Show is proudly brought to you by Florida's Formula Spiritonic. Most research has shown that breastfeeding your baby with the breast milk exclusively for the first six months is a gift a mother can give to her baby. When it comes to feeding, the breast milk is the perfect meal for the baby and it contains over 100 ingredients and every required nutrient your baby would need to grow. Remember, breastfeeding doesn't only benefit your baby, but also benefits you and the family as well. So mothers are encouraged to breastfeed from birth to at least two years of life, in addition to complementary feeds that starts from six months. So why not breastfeed if you can? Breast milk production with breastfeeding is something we expect that it should happen naturally after a woman has given birth. But then again, it becomes a heap of worry or problems to most mothers if they are producing too much of it or too less of it. How difficult or how easy should it be for breastfeeding mothers to breastfeed their babies? Research shows that breast milk contains all nutrients that your baby needs. It does not benefit your baby alone. You also benefit from breast feeding. On today's episode, we'll be looking at exclusive breastfeeding and breastfeeding as well. The show is the Pregnant Care and my name is Dede. Welcome to today's episode. So for today's episode, we have Auntie Debbie with us. Hello, Auntie Debbie. You're welcome once again to our show. Thank you. We are happy to have you here. And our viewers love you. So we are always going to have you on our show. Thank you, Auntie Debbie. So let's go for a short commercial break. When we come back, we'll look at everything breastfeeding. Florida's formula is a liquid herbal iron extract with the benefits of organic iron 3 polymaltose plus vitamin C and other B complex vitamins, the base of fruit juices and yeast. Florida's formula helps increase your energy level, stamina and highly nutritional and also reduces tiredness and fatigue. It contains vitamin B1, B2, B6, B12 and C. Florida's formula helps keep the family smart, healthy and strong. For inquiries, contact Unicom Chemist Limited on 0302-324-595 or 0302-324-383. You can also email unicomchemist at yahoo.com or visit www.unicomchemist.com. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back. If you just join us, the show is still the Pregnant Care Show and my name is Dede. Today we are talking about exclusive breastfeeding and breastfeeding. Why should I breastfeed or why shouldn't I breastfeed? So Auntie Debbie, what is exclusive breastfeeding? When should I start it and when should I end exclusive breastfeeding? When we say exclusive breastfeeding, all that we mean is that you start breastfeeding immediately the baby is born. And the baby should feed on breast to six months. And then after six months, we add supplementary feed to at least two years when baby is still feeding on the breast with the supplementary feed. Okay, so what are the benefits of exclusive breastfeeding to the baby and to the mother as well? Just looking at the exclusive breastfeeding. When we say exclusive breastfeeding, it has a lot of advantage to the baby. To the baby, it contains all the nutrition that the baby needs. It helps the baby to pass the first meconium, contains some antibiotics that protect the baby, it so, so help the baby to grow well, like the development of the brain, the body. Breast milk help with all these things. It, has, it help the baby and the mother to born, so they born well. It is very cheap, easily available for the baby, so baby can suck any time, even at night without sweat. So breastfeeding is very important for the baby. To the mother, it is very cheap. It's always there. He doesn't need to 
boiled uh, plates, cups before he prepared the food. And then he doesn't need money to buy it. All that he needs is to eat well, and then he can get enough milk for the baby. And also the mother can use breastfeeding as a form of family planning, which is very supportive to the mother. Also, it helps the mother to get some satisfaction that I've been able to feed my baby, to satisfy my baby at birth. So it's very, very good for the mother also. Two, the mother, the baby doesn't get sick. So the mother doesn't have to rush baby in and out to hospital and out. To the father, it is very good because fathers don't buy a lot of feed and other things. Also, after six weeks, when the woman is still finished with the menstrual, the menses, sort of, she can just go back to the wife because the lactational amenorrhea method, that is the form of the family planning, allow the man to have access to the wife without any fear because he, he, he doesn't fear that the woman will get pregnant very soon when he's feeding well. The man doesn't have to buy drugs and other things. And so it is also good for the man. The packet is safe. To the nation also is very, very good because if the children are not falling sick, then the country or the government will not import in a lot of drugs for children. And so breastfeeding is one of the best for the newborn. Okay. Auntie, then we want to know which mother cannot breastfeed? Uh, when we say some mothers cannot breastfeed, they are the women with small women with issues. When I say with issues, like a woman who is on cytotoxic drugs, okay. cancer drugs, okay. he cannot breastfeed because these cancer drugs pass through the breast milk. And since some women who are having maybe artificial breasts, you know, these days we change our breasts, we want the sizes, so some have silicone and other things. So these women cannot breastfeed. Or a woman who is on a particular drug that will pass through the breast milk, okay. then maybe doctor can advise that she should not breastfeed. Because now even our HIV mothers, they are breastfeeding, and babies are not getting HIV. They are doing well. So majority of women can breastfeed so is it okay to express breast milk probably a mother is not ready to feed directly from the breast is it okay for her to express and keep before giving to the baby yes please you can express breast milk one if you realize baby is not getting enough especially like the preterm babies when you realize it's not getting enough you can express and keep so that at least you know the exact quantity you are feeding the baby with also if you think maybe baby have a problem like cleft palate hair lip you can express and feed baby so that baby gets enough. Also, if baby is not sucking well and you have a lot of milk, you can lactate. You are lactating well. You can express and then feed baby. Also, you are lactating so much, you can express and save and then feed baby later on. Or you are a working mother. You were not given maternity leave. You want to feed the baby on breast. You can still express the milk and also save and then feed the, uh, the baby later on. And I'm saying that the breast milk can stay on a tabletop for at least four to seven hours, but you should keep it in a clean, tight container, and it should be maybe in a bowl of water so that ants and other uh, like cockroaches will not, not get into the milk because it's very nice. Normally, ants like the milk because of the sugar in it. So when you keep it in a bowl of something, it can be there for at least four to seven hours. And after seven hours, you have to throw discard it away, it. Okay. discard the rest. And then when you are in the fridge, it can be in the fridge between four to seven days. Okay. That is the one that we open in and out. And then when it's in the deep freezer, okay. it can be there for at least nine to one year even. So wow. we can save some of our milk. And then when you are saving the milk, you should have a date and a time of expressing so that when you want to go for the milk it will be first in first out and then it should be of a smaller quantity that the baby can feed so that when you pick it's not like in bulky that you have to wait for all of them to melt That's then before. you pour some no if it be do it that way you spoil the milk so you should store it in a smaller okay. quantity so that when we pick, pick one, one you can just put it down when it melts you put it in warm water shake it and then maybe give it to the baby okay. you shouldn't boil the milk and then you shouldn't microwave milk for babies okay so after you've used probably the frozen one you brought out from the fridge after you you've, you've uh, defrosted it and you used it the remaining you throw it you, you discard have to throw it, 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 it don't you have to discard it again yes okay so we want to know the first milk that is produced at birth what is the name and what is the benefit of that particular milk? The first milk is called colostrum. And this one is very good because the colostrum contains all the antibiotics that the baby needs 
for birth okay. and also it helps the baby to pass the first meconium it also prevents the baby from getting jaundice so it is very good so at birth that is why even immediately the baby, the woman delivers at the labor ward we clean the baby and then we make sure baby is warm and then we put baby to breast okay do drugs or any medical condition any of those can they also delay uh milk production yes some drugs can delay milk production the same way some drugs also are given for milk to be produced more and so sometimes when maybe a woman is on some certain drugs sometimes it can delay milk production a little oh, okay <laughs> but at the same time when he has when they are giving certain drugs also more milk can be produced oh, okay so how often should i feed my baby and how long should i feed my baby on a breast the baby should be fed on demand so anytime baby feel like feeding, you should give the milk to the baby. How do I know baby is even hungry? You should know when the baby is hungry, the first thing that the baby does, and the action is that you see baby throwing the hands, like, is anybody in? Is anybody around? And still, if you don't mind the baby, baby will start crying. crying. And when he cries, most of the time, it's the worst part. And so you have to calm the baby down before he takes the milk because he has shown you all the, the signs, of, signs of hunger and maybe you were busy or you were not maybe recognizing mm -hmm. it so baby will cry small so you should feed baby on demand mm -hmm. and then when you put baby to breast make sure that baby has sucked well on that breast before you change the baby to the other one so that he can empty that breast very well if you want your baby to feed well, baby shouldn't get joined. This baby should be happy. Make sure you feed baby well and enough. Let's go for a short commercial break. When we come back, we'll hit the street to find out what our viewers have for us on today's episode. Hello, my name is Jennifer. I'm speaking from Dan Suman. So my question today is, can another woman breastfeed another baby? And is it safe? Thank you. I'm Gertrude Williams. I want to find out from the midwife that does any food increase breast milk production? My name is Elizabeth. I live at Dan Suma and I'm self-employed. If you have a baby who is one year and you realize you are pregnant, do you stop breastfeeding or you continue to breastfeed for how long? I'm Rabia too from Dansoma. If a woman gives birth and she loses a child, how does she stop breast milk production? Welcome back. If you just joined, it's still the Pregnant Care Show. And those were some questions from our viewers on the street. Auntie Debbie, so a viewer would want to find out, does food increase breast production and what kind of food should you eat to increase milk production? Normally, when you eat well, the milk will be, more milk will be produced. But when you take fluid diet, like uh, mash kinky, oblai, soups, and other things, soups, mm. it helps the breast more milk to be produced so we need to eat well okay. but sometimes these days you realize that we young people we say when we eat more we we'll put on weight and so we don't want to eat but we need to eat well because when you're winning baby baby will not solely be on the breast again so then you can go back to your normal weight okay. so that at least we can get enough milk for our baby and then we should feed the baby well mm -hmm. especially at night because a lot of milk is produced at night so we should feed our babies well so that they can get enough milk okay. and grow well for us okay so our next viewer wants to know can another mother feed another mother's baby no please why a big no because number one you don't know the diseases and then then the things that that woman is having the woman may be having other diseases number two two maybe maybe the mother may be having different blood groups and other things which can affect the baby okay. so it is not advisable to breastfeed another uh, child's baby everybody should breastfeed his baby individually maybe i may be hiv positive you may not know i cannot tell you but you bring your baby to me to breastfeed the baby. I don't want anybody to know that I'm HIV positive. I'll just breastfeed the baby without telling you. Then I will infect your baby. 
So a woman who has lost her baby, how do you stop breast milk production? Because I think it would be very sad for her to still be producing milk while she has no baby. So how do you deal with such a mother? Normally, as I said earlier on, when you put baby to breast, the milk starts yeah. flowing in more. And so when baby is not suckling, the milk reduces. Okay. Also, we have drugs that help. You can also just put ordinary powder on the breast and support oh. it well. It also helps so that the milk will not be produced okay. and then the milk in it will reduce. But most of the time in the hospitals, doctors give medication which will suppress the milk production okay. and then milk will not be produced. Oh, okay, so at last we would want to know if a woman is, if she's having a child less than a year or probably a year and she's pregnant again, can she still breastfeed till she put to bed or she has to just stop breastfeeding because she's pregnant now? Let's say I'm six. Uh, I have a child who is six months yes. and I become pregnant again. I still have to feed my child till the child is two years. Okay. And so when the, I'm about to give birth to the new one, I can stop breastfeeding. Oh, okay. But sometimes because it is hectic for some people, you can still breastfeed your child at least to about a year. Then you stop the child from breastfeeding. But if you don't have any problem, you can still breastfeed the child to even the day that you are delivering the newborn, oh. then you stop. Okay, so how do I know that my baby is suckling well? What will help you know that baby is suckling well, number one, is when baby is positioned well. Number two is when baby is feeding without noise. No, you just see the uh, chain going in and out. It means baby is feeding well. When it's feeding with a lot of noise, it means baby is not feeding well. When you observe that the baby has come up from breast by him or herself, it means baby is satisfied. Right. So I know that during feeding, some babies taking a lot of air. How do you get that air out of the baby's stomach? Because I know it's very uncomfortable. And what normally happens is when babies are not lunch well to the breast, they get a lot of air into their tummy. Okay. So what you can do is, most mothers put the baby here, but you realize that they have folded the legs of the babies like this. So when you fold the legs like this, the baby's tummy does not touch your chest. Okay. So you, sometimes you don't get a lot of air out. But when you are doing it, you should make sure that baby lies flat on your chest yes. like this. And then you just wrap small. Then you can get the air out. Also, you can also put baby flat on your laps Lap. like this. And then wrap the back. Baby can also belch so that you get the air out of the baby. And you should make sure that baby belch well. Otherwise, you put baby down. And then baby will start making a lot of noise. Mm, mm, a whole lot of noise because okay. there's a lot of air in the tummy. A lot of colic in, in the their tummy, tummy so baby doesn't sleep well so we need to help baby get the wind out so that baby can sleep well okay so since we have a baby here what are some of the feeding positions you can um, teach or educate our mothers on we have various type of feeding positions we have the mcdonald which is very simple which most midwives will teach you that is putting baby like this okay. and then holding the baby this way Whilst the baby is feeding, you are looking at the baby, talking to the baby. You can do this and then feed your baby. Then we have the cradle position, which you can just put your baby like this also, and then feed the baby. Then we have the cross cradle, like this baby is here, and then baby may be feeding on this breast, so you just hold baby like this, so that baby can feed well. Then we have the sitting position, when the baby is a big baby, let's say about three, four months, baby can just sit on you like this, while the baby starts sucking from the breast. Then we also have the lying position, where the mother can lie whilst the baby lies by the side and then feed well. Okay. In all this position, after breastfeeding, try and then back the baby to break wind. What are some of the problems a woman could um, encounter during breastfeeding? Probably with the breast, maybe some cracked nipple, flat nipples or engorged breast. How do you deal with that? How do you encourage them to manage with that? Let's take them one by one. Let's okay. take crack and sore nipples. Oh. This happens normally when baby is not well latched to breast and the baby is feeding only on the nipple. Okay. So when baby is feeding only on the nipple, baby try to suck more so that he'll get the milk because the milk actually are in the areola. The so black? Yeah, black thing okay. around there. But if he feeds only the nipple, he gets the sore nipple. So number one, we need to help the woman position the baby well to the nipple. And then the woman needs to be relaxed so that baby can feed well. And then also, if it is hurting, he can expose the breast a little, put a little something like shea butter on it so that the 
a sore oh. can be healed. But if it is very, very painful, then the woman can express the milk from that breast and then feed, still feed the baby with the express milk, milk and then rest the breast a little so that the sore or the cracks can be healed well. And then let's talk about engorged breast. This normally happens as a result of a woman not emptying one breast well before going to the other one. So it's like when I put the baby to breast, he sucks more here. I turn the baby to this side, he sucks more here. When I do that, I can get an engorged breast. So the woman needs to be educated that when he's feeding a baby, she should try as much as possible to feed on one breast and make sure that it's the breast empty. is empty before she moves the baby to, to the, the other other. one. And then when he's starting the breastfeeding again, she should start from the same breast before she moves okay. to the other one so that the breast can be emptied well. Yeah. Remember that breast milk contains all the nutrients and everything the baby needs. So please, do not cut it short for the baby. Feed baby as long as possible. Let's go for a breather. When we come back, we'll have a couple moments. Could you, you look happy and strong. Yeah, Charlie. But I couldn't have done it without you, you know. Madam was always complaining. But ever since you introduced me to Spertonic, life has been good. Spertonic helps boost the immune system, fitness level, and performance. A tablet a day is all you need, man. Spertonic. Strong as a For inquiries, contact Unicom Chemist Limited on 0302-324595 or 0302-324595. 4383 email info at unicornchemist.com. Spretonic is not suitable for persons under 18. This advert is FDA approved. My name is Nanaya Alute, a mother of three, and I want to share with you my experience with breastfeeding. With my first, it was quite an experience, <laughs> but with the help of the midwives and the nurses at the hospital, um, I was able to manage. I, I was helped with the initial, I mean, the day after delivery, the nurses were very helpful. They taught me the, you know, basis of breastfeeding. And also I had CS, so they helped me a lot you know how to use pillows to support the baby whilst breastfeeding the correct posture uh, for breastfeeding and all that it took some time some few days for the breast to flow freely but well we were able to manage it's not easy you know uh, breastfeeding my second experience was much easier let me put it that way because of my, you know, first child and all that. But the third one was quite a different story. <laughs> uh, in that, the, after I had some issues, you know, after delivery, and that caused uh, a decline in the secretion of milk. I don't know if I'm wearing it right, but... For, I didn't realize it on time. I had my child was crying all the time and all that. He was not sleeping well. Only for me to realize that it's because the milk was not flowing. It was a very difficult emotional phase for me. But with the support of family, you know, my husband and all that, I mean, we got the necessary help that we needed. Over some few months, it was flowing perfectly. I mean, it was good. And then we had to stop the formula. I would encourage all mothers to try their very best to breastfeed their babies because it's very, very important, especially the first few weeks after delivery because that is where we learn that the children get the necessary minerals or nutrients that they need for development also i would encourage partners to help their wives after delivery especially when 
um, you know, we have to wake up at dawn at all times, you know, to breastfeed the children. Uh, when the children are crying sometimes, you have to give us a helping hand and attend to them so we get the necessary rest that uh, we deserve. So, thank you very much. Welcome back. So that was our couple moment. So Auntie Deborah, what would be your final words to our mothers, our couples out there on exclusive breastfeeding and breastfeeding in general? Uh, what I would say is mothers, when you are pregnant, you should make up your mind that you want to breastfeed if you don't have any problem. And then we will beg our husbands, even though the breast is for them, they should allow the children to suck small because it's a loan to the children. And when you take a loan and you don't work well with the loan, you go bankrupt. So the children have taken the breast as a loan from them. So they should allow the children to suck for at least two years. After two years, they will give the breast back to their fathers to continue sucking. So they should feed the babies well. And breast milk contain all the nutrition, all the nutrients that is good for the baby. So they should feed the babies well. So that we get clever babies. We get babies have us at heart. When you look at the developing countries, you see a lot of uh, uh, children having been truant and other things. It's because sometimes they don't get exclusive breastfeeding. Because when you get exclusive breastfeeding, there is bonding, there is love between your mother. You never raise a gun on your mother. You always love your parents. You always love the people around. You have some empathy for those people. So we should try as much as possible to feed our babies well so that our babies love us, so that we can also love them more. Thank you. Try as much as possible to feed your babies well so they grow with a lot of love and lots of care for you, even as the mother. So, Auntie Debbie, thank you so much for coming on today's episode. I think we've learned a lot about breastfeeding or exclusive breastfeeding. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank you, Auntie okay. Debbie. So, for today's episode, let's look at some tips on breastfeeding. Be relaxed and comfortable and choose a calm environment to feed or express if possible. Wash your hands with soap and water before feeding your baby, or you can use a hand sanitizer. If possible, give some fine, gentle massage to the breast before feeding. If you need to express milk, have your baby close to you as this enhances milk flow. Milk should be stored within a required specific time, maximum of four to six days at room temperature, four days in a refrigerator, and six to one year in a freezer, in a well-tight container or in milk bags. Do not refreeze milk that has been defrosted for use. After every feeding, milk should be discarded. Never microwave or heat milk directly, but allow to stand in warm water. Note that pain, stress, unhappy moods, and some ill health and some medication can delay milk production. So always talk to your lactational consultant, your midwife, or your doctor when it comes to any issue of breastfeeding. Thank you for watching today's episode. We looked at everything exclusive breastfeeding and breastfeeding in general. So we know that breast milk contains all the required nutrients your baby needs. And you also, as a mother, have a benefit of breastfeeding. It serves as a method of family planning. It helps you to get to your pre-pregnant state faster. It helps your uterus to contract. You do not bleed. And there are lots more of benefit of breastfeeding so do well to breastfeed your baby and the time of breastfeeding have that bonding speak to your baby say nice things to your baby during the period of breastfeeding thank you for watching today's episode keep following us on all our social media handles and subscribe to our youtube channel at the pregnant care show leave in your comments send in your questions and we'll answer them for you you can also follow me on my personal ig page at the day underscore that will leave in any comments you wish to see you next week